wanting to know more about how to grow herbs, what to plant them with, and the difference between a culinary herb garden and a medicinal herb garden. I'm gonna be talking a lot more about that in the videos to come over the summer. I've always grown culinary herbs and some medicinal herbs, but this is something I'm definitely delving deeper into this season and the seasons to come. I always grow my culinary herbs with my vegetable plants because the majority of everything out here is going to the table for food. So I love having my sage and my rosemary and my thyme and my oregano and basil right here along with my tomato plants and my peppers and my eggplants and lettuces. But the beauty of not only growing them with the food that you're going to be eating are the um, benefits they offer the plants, not only in health benefits, but in deterring certain pests. So your aromatic herbs like dill, oregano, parsley, thyme, uh, rosemary, sage, those ones that really give off that strong perfume are great for deterring all kinds of pests. So they're great to grow with uh, any number or any variety of plants in your garden. You really can't grow, go, grow wrong. You really can't grow wrong. I like that. Uh, putting herbs next to any of the plants in your garden because they're just gonna help repel a number of pests. It's also been shown in studies that tomatoes and peppers specifically grow really well with Mediterranean herbs, specifically basil, parsley, um, and here I've got sage, rosemary, and thyme. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Just remember the song if you can't remember your Mediterranean herbs. <laughs> so today I'm finally getting my culinary, the rest of my culinary herbs out in the garden. And as you can see behind me here, this is a long tomato row with my sweet peppers down at the end. So right here in this space here, I've got a ton of Tulsi or holy basil plants put in the ground because I love Tulsi tea. I just, it's one of my favorite teas to drink. So I wanted to make sure I had a lot of Tulsi that I could harvest fresh from and also dry for the winter. And then beyond that, I've got oregano and Thai basil. And then on the other side here of this row, I'm gonna have more of my Mediterranean herbs. I've also got parsley here, a big chive plant there, some more sage and orego, oregano over here with my peas. And on this row, I've got lots of onions and marigolds, what's called window or box basil. And then over here, I have all my sweet basil and my mammoth basil uh, along these sides of my tomato plants and uh, a few pepper plants down at the end. So I have lots of herbs in the garden this year, which I generally have herbs in the garden. I've just been a bit a little more thoughtful in my placement this year and wanting to have all of it together, where it grows together, where I can um, harvest it really easily and bring it in alongside anything from the garden that I'm harvesting. I, I'm just growing a lot more too, because I wanna be really uh, mindful in um, harvesting it and using it. Last year, I, I felt like I did a really good job of um, dehydrating most of my herbs and actually storing them in jars and I've been using them and in the, in the past I've been a little haphazard about it and just kind of used them here and there but I really see the value in growing herbs that you can use throughout the year they're they're super cheap um, even if you buy them at starts you know one plant can really provide a ton of leaves for the whole season depending on how you're using it um, I grew pretty much all my herbs from seed this year. The only ones I didn't grow from seed were rosemary and I, my thyme for some reason didn't do very well and lemon verbena is one that I didn't grow from seed. So I got a few starts from the local nursery in town. They were on sale, which was perfect. So I picked up some of the herbs that I didn't grow a lot of this year. Um, but moving forward, I will be growing most of my herbs from seed and harvesting them to a pretty good extent so that they can last for my culinary reasons, for tea, for medicinal purposes. That's the great thing about herbs. They can be used for so many things. Uh, they do really well in the garden. They're really easy to manage. Um, and there's just really no reason not to grow herbs. So I'm growing a ton of herbs this year and I probably will have more than I need and can just pass them off to friends. So like I said, I've got um, leeks over here and bunching onions here. And those aren't really technically herbs, but you obviously use them in your kitchen for flavor. So I love that I have them planted here with my tomatoes. They're gonna release a nice pungent scent what will help deter some plants, excuse me, <laughs> will help deter some pests. Um, 
and they don't take up much space in the ground next to these very heavy feeding tomatoes. And then I've got marigolds here. You know, marigolds are actually an edible flower and they do really well when planted near tomatoes. So I have more growing inside, but I've got several of them here planted amid, amongst the uh, onions and the basil. So I was going to zoom in here and let you see this box basil. It's so cute when it, it grows in like a little globe and there's just these little bitty leaves that you can basically just pull right off and put in a dish. You don't even have to chop them. Um, and they have such an amazing scent just from this little plant. So I grew several of these. They've kind of gotten beaten down by the, by the rain, but I'm hoping they'll perk back up here. Um, <laughs> once their roots get a little more established. And then over there, I've got my a mixture of sweet basil and mammoth basil. Um, I wanted to make sure I had lots of basil growing this year. The other thing I'm working on right now is establishing my medicinal herb garden. I've got lots of places on my property that I could put these plants. And I'm just trying to decide where I want them. Um, and the good thing about those type of plants is they are really easy to transplant. So if I plant them in a place that I want to move them the following year, I can do that fairly easily and it won't really disrupt the plant. But I'm looking at having my medicinal garden and sort of a cottage garden type deal up here near my house. And I'll show you the couple spots that I'm looking at and why there's sort of a challenge right now in getting this garden established. This spot right here is perfect because it gets a really nice amount of sun. And if some of them want shade, I have this tree here that can provide shade. But the problem is I've got this evergreen ground cover that was put here by the previous owner and the roots on this thing are just gnarly and very well established. Um, my father-in-law came out and pulled a huge, uh, we call it the mother root here, pulled this out the other day and you can just see the mass of roots that are in the ground here. So this is going to be quite a project to get all of this out. but. This is ideally where I would like to have my final um, herb slash cottage garden established right here, but it just may not be ready for it this season with the exception of uh, along the edges here where I've got some tulips and lilies and yarrow and peonies. I could plant some here where those evergreen roots haven't really grown too thickly. So this is maybe where I'm going to plant some of my amaranth and cone flowers here for the time being as I continue to work to clear out all of this. I also have this little garden right here that I really like that I'm in the midst of trying to de-weed. Um, it gets a lot of weeds in here just because it's in the middle of all this grass and I've got lilies and um, gladiola here right now but I'll probably be pulling out these bushes and just getting out the weeds and I'm really thinking this might be a great spot to start my medicinal herb garden um, because it's just right here by the house it's its own little dedicated spot and eventually as I clear out that over there I can just move them if I so choose so I think I'm going to get this cleared out here in the next couple of days and start planting my amaranth and cone flowers and mullein and comfrey and lavender I definitely will be adding to that plant list, but that's what I have right now. I love cone flowers. Cone flowers, if you're not familiar with them, specifically purple cone flowers are echinacea and the echinacea root and even the leaves um, are useful for medicinal purposes. And just to, like a standard herb to have in your garden for medicinal uses. And it's beautiful, but they have to be pretty well established just because you're using the root of the plant. So if you pull up the root of the plant, you're gonna kill the plant. So you wanna make sure you have lots of them or that they're really well established before you really start utilizing, utilizing them for medicinal herbs. And then amaranth and of course lavender we're all familiar with for the most part. And comfrey and mullein and sage. Those are all great things to use for a lot of those um, illnesses that you experience uh, in a family like colds and congestions and coughs. So the things that we battle mostly, those particular herbs are really great um, for treating. And I've also got a ton of peppermint and lemon balm growing already over in the shade garden near my house. So I didn't really need to plant any more of that. Oh, anise hyssop. That's the other one that I'll be growing um, out here probably in this space. If it takes over, that's okay. I could let this be the anise hyssop garden eventually. Um, it does have tending, um, a tendency to have the growth habits of mint because they are in the same family. So it can take over um, and become invasive if you don't you know, make regular cuttings of it. 
So I may put the anise hiss hiss up here along with the other flowers and I'm not too worried if it, it becomes invasive. So those are my thoughts right now on where I'm gonna be placing the medicinal garden that I will be working on throughout the summer and keeping you updated on um, its status. I will be doing some more videos as we move forward about you know how to use these herbs, whether it's culinary cooking or medicinally. Now I am not an herb um, specialist by any stretch of the imagination. I've just kind of dabbled in them here and there, but I have been taking classes to learn how to use them more um, specifically for things in the house. And it's just the way to go. I mean, they're readily accessible in the garden. You can dehydrate them and have them throughout the season. You can make easy syrups and teas and tinctures very simply that can last for quite a while if you do it right. Um, so there, in my mind, there's no reason to not uh, make more use of my garden space for these medicinal and culinary herbs. There's a great um, master class that the homesteading family, Carolyn and Josh, I don't remember their last name, but they offer some great um, blog posts and classes on how to use uh, your herbs for medicinal purposes and I've learned a lot from them. I mean a lot of it I knew it was just kind of getting a protocol down for how I want to use them with my family and that's kind of what I'm using as my my startup but my specialty is growing things in the garden and uh, and that's what I will be teaching here for the most part where I'm planting them how I'm planting them and then how I'll be using them moving forward. But for the remainder of the day, I'm gonna be getting these herbs in the ground and I'm gonna be planting, hopefully, if I can get it before the rain starts, the rest of my winter squash back out here where this black tarp is here behind me. This is where I'm gonna plant the rest of my winter squash, which is for right now, it's just uh, butternut squash and a variety called butterkin, which is like butternut, but in like a little pumpkin shape. <laughs> I love it. It's just really easy to, to cook and cut up for meals. It's just something I'm trying this year. So basically butternut squash out here, that's what we use the most of. Um, and then I'll be interplanting in there all my sunflowers that I'm growing inside, succession planting them, hopefully one week at a time throughout the summer until about six to seven weeks before my first frost date. So I'll have a nice big sunflower garden out here. That's the goal. So I've got a whole nother tray of sunflowers going in my house that I'll be able to plant out here in the next week or so. And I've already planted a bunch back here along this fence line like I did last year because it's just such a beautiful backdrop to all the garden plants out here. And this is the north side of my garden. So they're not gonna shade um, any of these plants in here that need the sun. They're on that north side. So they're just a beautiful thing to stare at, at from my you know, house and anyone that comes and peruses my garden always enjoys the sunflowers. So I'm gonna plant these herbs. I may get my um, herb garden up there attacked today and then hopefully getting these uh, winter squash in the garden today so that things can really get growing. So my son and I just worked really hard to get this next section done here. Uh, I'm gonna guess this is about 10 by, I don't know, 12 or 15, just a guess, which is a good space. I've got three uh, butternuts left over from yesterday. I have nine in this bed over here that I planted with the corn. If you saw my um, how to avoid cross pollination between corn and how to plant a three sisters garden video right here. Uh, I planted some ultra butternut squash in that garden. And now I've got three of those left. I've got some butterkin, which are the butternut squash crossed with like a small pumpkin. I just want to try it this year. I've got a couple of those. And then I have this squash. I can't remember the second name of it, but it's an old uh, a Native American squash. It's long and orange. It's supposed to be really good. It's called, I don't know how to pronounce it. Bait, Bete, BT, and then I can't remember the, the second part of the name, so I'll put it in the captions below, but I have some of those which I'm really curious to grow. So we'll see how much room we have. I'm gonna space these out about five feet by five feet, um, and I may or may not get them all in this space, and then we'll just have to work again tomorrow. But 
yeah, I'm glad that we're getting these in the ground. And then again, I'm going to be interplanting this squash with for sure some sunflowers, maybe some more corn if I decide to grow it inside and possibly beans. We'll see. I'm still kind of working out that plan in my head, but for sure sunflowers and winter squash. So we're about to have some rains. So we're going to get this in the ground and I'll see you on the other side. All right. So there it is. Yesterday we planted the three sisters garden or two thirds of it anyway, with the butternut squash and the popcorn. Now we've got the rest of our butternut squash, the butterkins and the bete something or other that I'll put in the notes <laughs> right here. So that worked out perfectly. So three, three and three. Um, and yeah, that's all my winter squash for the year. So hopefully I didn't plant them too close together we'll find out i will say i got to know a farmer a local farmer last year um who's in his 70s and great guy farmer ed i've mentioned him before uh and he had the most amazing uh squash garden winter squash garden and pumpkin garden and uh so we actually went out and helped him on several occasions harvest a lot of his winter squash and his pumpkins got to know him pretty well and uh, I asked him, how are you able to grow this much? He only has like a couple of acres, no fencing, um, and just tons and tons of squash. And so I asked him about his spacing. And I think this is pretty close to what he did, actually. Maybe a smidge more, but, you know, five to eight feet apart, he grew all the squash, again, with no fencing, which I thought was interesting. And, you know, there were some that didn't make it, and, but most of them did. So... I'm hoping I can have a small version of Farmer Ed's winter squash garden this year. That's the goal. And I sure am using a heck of a lot of space than what I had originally thought in my head. I probably was thinking I'd space them out more here, but I'm just going to do this and train those plants to grow this way. That's the goal. I want them to grow this way. And you can do that with stakes, you know, little, um, like if you think about croquet uh, hoops that the ball goes through, you can buy a miniature of those and you can train the larger vines of your pumpkins and your winter squash to grow a certain direction. So you have to be on top of it, watching those vines and kind of training them as they grow. But if I can get them to go this way instead of that way or into the chicken yard or into the field, although that wouldn't be too bad, um, I think this space will be well utilized. So you can watch this season to see how it goes and do it along with me, or you'll have notes for next year if you decide to grow a nice big winter squash or pumpkin garden. So that's it for today. It's about to rain and we're eating lunch. So we're gonna let this get watered in. And the next goal is getting the sunflowers out and finishing my culinary, not my culinary, my medicinal herb garden. So I'm excited to get that on film and get it in the ground. So again, my name's Landon Gilfillan with Pepper and Pine Garden Design, growing gardeners in their gardens. And I'll see you in the next video.